Brexit. Not long to go and everything is somehow even more screwed up than it was yesterday morning. So let's have a sweary update, shall we? So the day before yesterday, Theresa May launched herself by RAF into Europe on her quixotic quest to get her dodo deal through somehow by forcing more concessions from Europe. Europe has essentially stretched as far as they're either willing or able to, and so this turned out to be completely pointless. There were some mild changes in wording, some more assurances, all of this relating to the to the backstop, uh, but then, literally and figuratively, legal advice came forward that this was all bollocks, that it made absolutely no difference whatsoever. So, she wasted her time, essentially, and came back to Parliament trying to recommend her deal again and sounding more like she'd spent the evening in a deep throat contest against Linda Lovelace rather than negotiating with anyone in Europe. And she was saved only from having the most humiliating defeat in parliamentary history by the fact that she already held that record even worse last time she fucked up the vote. So where do we stand now? Well, with a couple of weeks to go, nobody has the blindest fucking idea of what the hell is going on. May Steele's defeated. It is essentially dead, but she still seems utterly wedded to it. There's a vote today on whether Parliament wants a no-deal Brexit or not. Nobody with a lick of sanity or sense wants there to be a no-deal Brexit. It would be absolutely catastrophic for the UK economy, for everything for everyone it would be complete chaos until things settle down and even then yeah most analysts reckon it's going to do between six and twelve percent damage to british gdp yeah over the next few years for context the great recession was two to three percent so we're looking at something three to four maybe five or six times worse than the great recession it's a fucking stupid idea, and anyone who backs it is a moron. You can't just tear yourself free of Europe and expect everything to be hunky-dory and tickety-boo. It's just not going to work like that at all. It's ripping ourselves free rather than having some negotiated deal. And it's only in light of a no-deal Brexit that May's deal looks remotely palatable either to anyone on the Remain side or to anyone on the Leave side. The one thing that unites the country is that nobody wants May's deal, except Theresa May. But she's going to push this down to the wire because this vote is supposed to be taking no deal off the table, and it will probably pass on that basis. But May wants to put wording explicitly into it, restating that no deal is the default. So she's essentially playing chicken with the country, right? Because she figures that at the last minute... Probably the Remain side of the equation will bottle it and say, well, no deal's awful, so we're actually going to do our political duty as politicians and take the least worst option. The worst thing is she's probably right, because that seems to be the only side of the equation the responsible politicians who take their duty seriously are. Ah. And then next week, I believe, there will be a vote on whether Parliament wants to extend the Article 50 period. The problem with that is that Europe has to agree, and Europe's only going to agree to an extension if there's some sort of actual plan there, which is going to mean either Labour's proposal, in which we stay in the customs union and, and various other bits, so a much softer Brexit, or an election, that would kind of force everyone's hand, or... A second referendum and if we're having an election we might as well have a second referendum at the same time just you know we'd be organized then uh, and where's magic grandpa during all this where where is jeremy corbyn what's he doing i mean obviously this is the time to to pounce to be a true opposition to put a stop to brexit yeah and back a people's vote a second referendum so that we can go you know what actually this seems like a shit idea Let's not do it and um, pretend none of this 
ever happened. But no, because Corbyn is actually pro-leave, he just wants a, a Labour leave, and because he wants to force a general election so that he can get a, a whiff of power, which isn't going to work, by the way. No, uh, he's backed away from Labour's half-hearted, feeble backing for a second referendum and is once again pushing his own alternative Brexit plan, which is two unicorns instead of one unicorn, which the Tories are offering. Uh, it's just He's just fucked it. We've got no effective government. We've got no effective opposition. We have barely any politicians who are willing to grasp the nettle, do the right thing and show some fucking leadership for once. It, the, the whole thing is a gigantic clusterfuck on, on every side. And we've got all these Labour spokespeople and stuff coming forward, you know, backing away even from their feeble backing for a people's vote. And this, in spite of the fact that Labour areas have swung to favour Remain, that Labour membership is something like 75% in favour of Remain still and having a people's vote. In Parliament, even more of that as a proportion of the Labour Party is pro-Remain, those who haven't fucked off to join the independent group at least. And yet Corbyn is sticking to this stubborn delusion that he can force and then win an election or put Labour's version of Brexit forward. Not something you want to do because whatever version of Brexit we have, it's going to really fist the entire country and whoever's responsible is going to be unelectable for a generation. So the opposition is failing to oppose, the government is failing to govern, the whole thing is completely rogered. And how's the country reacting to all this? Well, it's misinformed, deliberately, a lot of the time, as, as badly as it ever has been. A lot of people think that no deal means remain. That's how uninformed and uneducated on all of this most people are. They're not necessarily stupid, they've just been misled, misinformed. I mean, the whole Leave campaign was built on lies, the, the idea that we didn't have control of our borders, or our laws, or the, that somehow we could leave and everything would be fine and things might somehow be better. All of those promises, all of that bullshit has fallen away and yet some people still believe it, still think this is a good idea, but the majority now don't. I mean it should be 90 to 10 perhaps, it should only be the extreme fringe lunatics who still want a Brexit and yet here we are, but if we were to hold the vote again, odds are Remain would win. And that is the only way I can see free of this impasse. There isn't the backing for May's deal. Nobody with a lick of sense wants no deal except a minority of headbangers, right? Labour's deal isn't going to command a majority either. So there, there is no way forward other than to have a binding referendum with clear terms on it of what anything means. People seem to have deluded themselves into thinking that Brexit meant a hard Brexit all along, when the Leave campaign did not campaign on that fucking basis whatsoever. <laughs> uh, all the talking heads never said that. You know, it was all you know, sunlit uplands and all this kind of horseshit. Extra money for the NHS. None of this is true. None of it, literally. Remain and reform is, I think, the only way forward for, for Europe, because it does have issues. Uh, but for Britain as well. And the only way we can get to that position is to have another binding, clean, informed public vote. There's just no other way forward. And that's probably the only way we're going to get an extension out of the Europeans as well. Fuck me. So what happens next? Well, today there'll be this vote on whether Parliament wants a no deal or not. That will comfortably be voted that we don't want no deal, but May has weaseled the words, like I said, so that no deal remains the default, because she wants to play chicken with the fate of the country, hoping that people will turn aside at the last minute and back her bullshit that nobody wants. Even the people who voted for it don't want it, they just recognise it as perhaps the least worst option that's going to happen. I think they're misguided, but there you are. Unless that gets amended to the point where Remain becomes the default. Um, it, today is just a pointless, meaningless waste of time because it won't be binding in any way and and hard leave, you know, just breaking off from Europe with a snap is going to remain the default. Next week there'll be a vote on whether to extend. Less certain what will happen there. It might, 
but there's a hard deadline in July coming up as well so it can't really extend past that because then we'd have to participate in the European elections and and all the rest of it so uh, it's hard to tell how, how that will go I think Parliament might vote for an extension but then the EU has to agree to it and they're going to want either a second referendum or a sincere and meaningful shift in Britain's position which is likely to mean a very soft Brexit where we have to agree with the overwhelming majority of what goes on in Europe but have no say that the best deal is the one that we have with all the exceptions and the overrides and the vetoes and the special treatments and considerations that we have we can use the impetus behind what nearly just happened to really push for reform in Europe and there is an appetite growing in Europe for that in France in Germany everywhere across Europe people are saying they want more democratic reforms and Europe is remember the the EU is already more democratic than our home system that's where the hope lies we can be a forward-thinking part of Europe or we can be an irrelevant little subpar Singapore off the shore eating chlorinated chicken and acting as a tax haven for Russian oligarchs and I would rather be part of something bigger and braver and more hopeful Zang.